2024, please, you must be joking. But I'm really not. Today I have the absolute pleasure of revisiting one of my old school favorite primary weapons, the mighty Tigris Prime. Uh, the once mighty Tigris Prime. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be re-diving deeper into the Tiger's Prime. As per usual, I'll have an introductory level build and an end game setup. That said though, please bear in mind that my building guides usually take a more no prayer friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Tigris. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Tigris Prime has one of the more unusual trigger systems in Warframe. This, my friends, is a duplex trigger system. And if you just click your button like so, it might seem like some sort of burst shot. Nothing you haven't seen before. But if you actually hold your trigger finger press down, it only fires one shell. And then when you release, boom, another shell. That makes it cool and awkward. And... Technically speaking, not extremely efficient, but it is cool, and that's the point, right? Outside of that, there's really not a whole lot to say. You fire two shells, then you're going to be doing a one-two reload, and that's pretty much it. The accuracy of the weapon, well, for a shotgun, this is roughly 10 meters till the target. Hey, most of the pellets are kind of within the crosser, so that's fine, right? And you are firing a whole lot of pellets by default. Speaking of pellets, how many pellets is too many pellets? question no such thing anyway multi-shot by default is eight which is awesome because just with health chamber alone and you're going to 17.6 and no you are not taking a pellet cutting 40 percent off of it throwing it away and then chucking what's left at the enemy essentially per each and every single shot you're going to be getting guaranteed 17 pellets and a 60 percent chance per shot again at an 18th pellet you get how that all works yeah pretty good fire rate of two magazine of two uh accuracy of medium i don't know accuracy of medium and what i wanted to point out here is the reload on this one which was 1.8 seconds still 1.8 seconds ammo maximum doesn't really matter all that much neither does the ammo from pickups trigger duplex like i explained earlier and curiously enough riven this position of three out of five i love you guys i honestly do i am so happy to see that this one still has three out of five because it means there must be some tenor out there that still play with the tigris prime like i do that and also the fact that D hasn't updated the Riven Dispose in a long while. And trust me, all you Incarnate fans out there, you don't want them to do that. At least, not yet. Critical chance is 10%. It's abysmal. That means how much crit can I get with this one? Well, you're going to get critical deceleration. That is 200%. And you're going to go to 30%. Does that mean it is worth it on the Tigris Prime? Well, you can. Of course you can build into crit. You got 30% now plus 45 from Adventure. You go to 75%. Contributions, right? You can, but... Historically speaking, that's not really how the Tigris Prime shined. But we're also going to try a status build and a crit build as well, just to satisfy everybody. Critical multiplier 2x by default, which is not bad. Status per projectile 11.2. Once upon a time, we had this golden rule with pellet-based weapons. It said the following, you need to get 100% status chance. There was a huge difference between having 99.9 .9 and 100%. At 100%, each and every single pellet will be applying a status. But if you had 99.9, .9, then your status chance would have been getting divided among the pellets that you fired. Huh? And the game never told you that. <laughs> yeah, for real. If you think you have it hard now, it was actually a whole... And anyway, the damage on this one, a whole lot of damage by default, 1,560. Again, you are firing 8 pellets. This is the total. And most importantly, heavily weighted into slash damage. One more thing you should know, the weapon does have its own augment, it's called Combat Reload, it was obtained from Nora's Mix Volume 1, Level 23, but it's a pretty goddamn bad mod. If 5 bullets are headshots, increases reload speed by 120% for 3 seconds, big freaking wolf. You might as well just use reload mods instead. Use Prime Tactical Pump with 100% reload. If not, use Repeater Clip with 105% fire rate when aiming for 9 seconds. Honestly, I don't know what they were thinking with this one. It's not a very good mod and you should not use it. Now, mod capacity 60 out of 60. As soon as you finish building it, it will come with 30 out of 30. You jump into actions to double that mod capacity. You install the Oroking Catalyst, but wait. If you're more of a newer channel, this ain't it. 
the meta currently doesn't favor weapons with the strong suits that the Tigris has. I'm trying to avoid saying that the Tigris Prime is a bad weapon, but dear the Yes, it is a bad weapon in today's meta. It simply cannot compete with Incarnate weapons, with area of effect weapons, and so on and so forth. If you choose to play the Tigris Prime like I choose to play the Tigris Prime for the flavor, for the looks, for the nostalgia, fantastic. If not, if you want one of the best primary weapons in the game, this ain't it. I'm afraid it wouldn't even make a top 15, let alone a top 10. You want to see the best primary weapons in the game? I got your back. Click the card right now. But let's say you're more of my kind of guy and you still want to build this one. Here's an introductory level setup. Damage at point blank, multi shot with health chamber and vigilante armaments. No critical chance, no critical damage. Instead, we're going for a status build. I'm assuming by this point you got bored of the whole critical chance and hunter munitions thing. Not today, my friends. More status chance with shotgun savvy. You also got sweeping serration on this one. Scattering inferno and frigid blast and toxic barrage. These two will be forming vital damage, right? We got toxin and cold if you don't know how to farm these. Toxic Barrage, Corrupted Void in the Void, Frigid Blast, Spy Mission, Scattering Inferno, also Spy Missions if I remember right. Regardless, on the weapon I got Impact Puncture Slash, Heat and Vital now. What do I want to proc the most? I want to proc as many Slash as I can. So therefore I got Sweeping Serration on it, which will proc the Bleed effect. If you hover over the status chance, look, look at this, you guys have it so easy nowadays. 19.5 chance to proc Slash. Now granted, that Vital at 13. Point three is awfully high, so you can use unranked Frigid Blast and Toxic Barrage, but take my word for it, just go like so. No additional anything, we're going to be shooting level 100 Corrupted Heavy Goo. Let's not shoot level 100 Corrupted Heavy Goo, let's go, I don't know, what do you shoot with the Tigris? Level 100, non-steel path, Grenier Battle Group. How's that? Hold on, we're going to kill heavier stuff later. But for now, this should be a decent test. I'll be honest with you, I forgot the mastery lock out of the Tigris, but don't tell nobody. So obviously, you're just gonna destroy everything, especially if you go for a headshot. If the contact damage doesn't get them, then the damage over time generated by the slash and the heat, as you can see, will absolutely annihilate die target. And you see, I am using the duplex trigger system to its maximum potential. That is, shoot, hold your finger press down, and then release another shot. Now granted, you will have heavier targets such as this one, so you want to go for headshots in those cases. If not, for a Lancer, you can even go for a crotch shot, like so. Corrupted Heavy Goon, single shot. How many procs did I get? Oh, look at that, five slashes, two heat procs, and four vitals. Plenty to do a lot of damage over time, but not enough to kill the target. This is the performance you can expect out of a mundane, everyday build for the Tigris Prime. Like I stated before, I honestly don't believe this is ideal for newer players, unless, of course, you love the feel of the sawed-off shotgun kind of affair. For more veterans, well, it's time to talk, my friends. A more souped-up setup will be looking something like this. And I know, hold on, dude, you got a Revan, so horrible. It's not so horrible, it's actually delicious. Damage slash multi-shot and minus damage to Corpus. Now, in case you don't have a Revan, you can always go to Vigilante Armaments more multi-shot for a non-crit approach, and for a crit approach, you can go for critical deceleration and that 20 extra percent critical chance that it's gonna be giving you. Now, I'm still keeping Sweeping Serration, and keep in mind before you yell Blaze or whatever else 6060, careful about the elemental weight when it comes to the Tigris. What do you want out of it? Slash and maximum of heat, which is why we have Scattering Inferno on this one. Right now we're looking at a slash chance to proc of 20.7, heat is next at 4.7, puncture and impact essentially being negligible at this point. We also got a faction modifier on this one because the main strength of the Tigris Prime is to deal damage to your targets through damage over time effects, aka slash, heat, so you need to have that faction modifier. If you don't know how it double dips, how it actually works in the whole formula thing, I got a nifty guide on Hunter Munitions, of all things. Link to the cards right now. Shotgun Vendetta on this one, and Viral is going to be coming from the Little Sentinel. We're going to be using the Diriga with the Hellstrom. Obviously, Galvanize mods at this point for a veteran such as yourself should be self-explained. And yes, critical damage, because we are going to be getting critical chance a bit more from Arcane Avenger. The Diriga were a basic level build, and of course, more importantly than that, a Primer Hellstrom. More importantly than that, equally as important. The Diriga and the Hellstrom essentially right now in Warframe make up for an absolutely delicious Primer combo. We're gonna be spawning the same targets as before, only we're gonna go 205 with these Steel Path modifiers on. I'm gonna be unpausing the AI so they can hit me. Now let's see what we can achieve with this one. I'm gonna go shot by, wait. Oh, this is just the Grenier Battle Group. These guys don't matter. These guys are too easy to kill. Yeah. And right now, keep in mind, I'm using on the gun the uh, Corrupted Faction Modifier, which doesn't do anything against Grenier. You actually need to spawn, you know, Corrupted for it to work. 
You know what? Let's go Corrupted Battle Group. I mean, why not? Here we go. Though the Heavy Goons are a bit more tougher. These Butchers are so easy to kill, you'd think I'm not trying to show the true power of the weapon. Look at that. A single shot, 205, Corrupted Heavy Goon, absolutely annihilated, as well as the Bomb Bar. If the contact damage doesn't get your target, for example, crotch shot right there, then the damage over time will. You don't necessarily need to go for a headshot. Essentially, the death of your enemy is guaranteed. Now, the butchers are pretty goddamn easy. Oh, did you saw I'm using Seeking Fury on this one? That means reload speed, which is good, and also getting 75% from Shotgun Vendetta, so 75% from the Vendetta and 15% from Seeking Fury. And I'll go to 90% reload speed on this one, plus the 1.2 meters worth of punch, which can be very useful. Get a clump up ability and essentially kill everything with the Tigris Prime. This is the kind of performance you can expect out of the weapon. And sometimes, yes, punch is extremely useful, and in other cases, it's completely worthless. But let's say you want to build it into crit. In that case, we're going to make a couple of changes. And yes, of course, Hunter Munitions needs to be here with 75%. And we're going to be replacing Seeking Fury. I also have a Satyrtron, but I can't be ours. Okay, so there you go. Same targets as before. Essentially, the performance will be more or less the same. Only this time, we're going to be getting a bit more crit out of the weapon. Butchers still get annihilated. Here's my corrupted heavy goon. I'm gonna release a single blast into its head. 250,000. The value of the slashes, if you're interested, the highest number I seen was like 800 something thousand. Though you don't really need that much for level 200 steel path. Now I know what you're gonna say. Hold on, there. This is the simulacrum. It's a controlled environment, and even 1.8 mil. Th did I see that right? Now, I'm gonna show you this one fighting some murmur, but before that, tell me, my friends, what is or was the number use case scenario for the Tigris Prime? That's right, high index. Die, Corpus scumbag, die, Zanuka looking built. No, it's not the Zanuka, by the way. You guys remember the days when Rhino was the only carrier? Or mostly the only carrier? You guys remember that? And you would light fill your rhino with a whole bunch of these here points and it will look like a Christmas tree by the time you would get to John Prodman. You guys remember that? Those times are gone. I mean, you can still and should still be doing index if you want some credits, but nowadays you can do profit taker and if you don't want to do profit taker, you can do some railjack shenanigans. Regardless, if you want to take the Tigris Prime into index for all time sakes, rest assured, it still absolutely shreds. Now let's go fight the Murmur, yeah, the Murmur against them. What do we build? We build Corrosive and Radiation. In my case, I'm not going to bother with the Corrosive this time. I'm just going to be replacing Prime Cleanse Corrupted with Atomic Fallout. Now let's see what this one can do versus that Murmur. We're going to be going shot by shot with the Fantastic Rhino. And yes, you are correct. I only picked up Rhino for the Nostalgia. Hey, I can, so why the hell not? Of course, you see my problem. I need to go shot by shot and go in shot by shot in a survival when you get a whole lot of, well, enemies. It's not exactly the smartest thing you can do. However, you can mitigate this with a bunch of punch through, which I already have, and a clump up ability. For example, you can pick up something like a Nidus instead. Mental note, updated stupid Rhino build. Outside of that, for the weapon itself, it still shreds target to target without any issue. But what will it do versus an Acolyte? Since technically these weapons don't really do a fantastic job versus Acolytes, I'm talking about weapons that get their damage on primarily from damage over time effects, as the Acolyte can only have four of a single type of proc at a time. Oh, here it is. Get stomped upon. Come on. Oh, look at the procs, kill him. I think I could have waited on a single duplex fire there, but still, just two, and I got him. And granted, yes, the crowd control did help me out. Now, my friends, it's time to draw some conclusions on the Tigris Prime. Is the Tigris Prime worth using in 2024? And that one is a two-part answer. The long and short of it is, well, yes. If you enjoy old-school nostalgia weapons, if you like the feel and sound of the Tigris Prime, from a meta perspective, hell no, of course not. It simply cannot compete. Why? Well, look. That's the Incarnate Lex. That's a secondary weapon. It absolutely shreds corridors upon corridors. And this is not even like the most powerful example I can show you when it comes to incarnate weapons. So, there you go. It is what it is. But you know what? Not everybody plays just for the meta. Some of us also like to have a bit of fun. 
As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's going to be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Keep the sky in your mind